We had this question on linear transformations and the algebra of matrices and we are going to be working around it. We are told that two linear transformations P and Q in the zero XY plane are defined by P operating on XY such that it will transform it to X plus 2Y comma X and Q operating on XY such that it will transform it to X plus Y and minus X plus 2Y. First, we have to write down the matrices of P and Q. Then we have to find them such that 2P plus 3Q minus MQ is equal to 5I where M is a 2x2 two two matrix and I is a 2x2 two two identity matrix. So, if you really want to get a good understanding of what we are talking about with linear transformations, let me just give a very simple analogy on how we can best express it. If we have this as our 0xy coordinate, in which you can say this is 0, this is x, and this is y. If we take a sample space just at any point, let's say here, and we define it as a comma b, okay? So here, this is a, 2a, 3a, 4a, and this is b, 2b, 3b, 4b, and 5b, okay? Now, this particular point, this vector space defined as a comma b, we can translate, for example, let's say we're now going to move it, instead from being at a comma b, we can say next, we want to have it as here, 1, 2, 3, as 3a, okay? And then, let's say we also have to have it as 4b, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 4, okay? So, if you look at this particular place, we are going to notice that we can as well just extend this like this and here. Yeah, then we can say we want to define a new position here yeah, that relative to a comma b, you know, this will now be 3a comma 4b. Initially, we have a comma b, but now we are moving to 3a comma 4b. And what did we just do? We just did a linear transformation by multiplying the value of a by 3 and multiplying the value of b by 4 to get this particular new location that we have instead of a comma b. So what we're actually doing is we can say we are we are transforming, we are operating v on a comma b such that it will transform it to 3a comma 4b. You see, if you can understand this. This is just a very simplified model. If you can understand this, then you'll be able to understand linear transformation in the vector space. Like for example, what we are giving, we are told that P is operating on XY such that it will land it to be X plus 2Y comma X. What are we trying to find out? We are looking for the matrix P that will operate on this vector space X comma Y to turn it to X plus 2Y comma X. And ideally, that means we are going to have a 2 by 2 matrix that is multiplying x and y in such a way that the product will be x plus 2y. And in this second case, you know, we don't have any argument for y. So it's as if the argument for y is 0. So I can say it is x plus 0. So we are looking for a set of values in this matrix that will multiply this to give this. And normally we know that by operation of matrices, we multiply row by column, okay? So, there is an entity here that is multiplying x that is giving us x. And there is an entity multiplying y that is giving us 2y. And what are those entities? You can see, what are we going to multiply with x to give us x? It is 1, okay? And what are we going to multiply with y to give us 2y? It is 2. So, we have 1 times x is x plus 2 times y, that is 2y. So this is the understanding that we need to get to evaluate the matrix P as requested. In the second case, we are multiplying a set of values with this column matrix. You know, this is the row, and that's how we multiply matrices together. We multiply the row of the first and the column of the second. So we are multiplying entities in this row with this particular column to give us x plus 0. And what is going to be that entity? What are we going to multiply with x? To see give us x, it is 1. And what are we going to multiply with y to give us 0? It is 0. So here we can say 1 times x is x, 0 times y is 0. So therefore we can say the matrix P is defined as 1, 2, 1, 0. I hope this is clear enough. Okay. 
this is the way to go about and once we understand this, we will discover that our work is quite simplified, linear transformation becomes simple and on our fingertips. In the second case, we have Q operating on X, Y, so that it will transform it to X plus Y, minus X plus 2Y. Again, we are looking for that matrix that will multiply with the column matrix X, Y, so that the product will give us, in the first case, X plus Y, and in the second case, minus X plus 2Y, okay? We are looking for a particular set of values that will multiply x, y to give us x plus y. Look at it. What are we going to multiply with x plus y to give us x plus y? That is 1. So, for that particular row, what we are going to have is this is 1 and this is 1. So, that we have 1 times x is x plus 1 times y, that is y. And in the second case, let's be careful here because we are seeing a negative sign. What are we going to multiply with x for this particular case and this particular case, okay? What are we going to multiply with x to give us minus x? That is going to be minus 1. What are we going to multiply with y to give us 2y? That's going to be 2. So that we have minus 1 times x is minus x plus 2 times y, that is 2y. So therefore, Q is defined as the matrix 1, 1, minus 1, 2. And with that, we've been able to solve the first question, the A part. That is asking us to write down the matrices of P and Q. So once we have been able to do this, we can now move on to the second algebra of matrices to solve that question. And that's what we are going to do now. Now, from our previous questions, we'll be able to get the value of P and Q as shown on the board. But we're also giving the identity matrix I to be a 2x2 two two matrix. And now, if I is a 2x2 two two identity matrix, that means we are having only one in the leading diagonal and every other value as zero. That is how a, an identity matrix is defined. But from this question, we are told that we are giving 2p plus 3q minus mq is equal to 5i. And what we are looking for is what? Is the matrix m. So from here, we want to rearrange. We can say we can move mq to one side and the other entities will be on just one side. Well, I want to write my MQ first. So I have MQ is going to be now we have 2P plus 3Q, then 5I will be on the other side minus 5I. So this is the expression that we need to work with to try and get the value of M. I'm leaving MQ because I know that M multiplied by Q will give me a set of values that I can relate to what I have on the right hand side. And since the left-hand side is going to be equal to the right-hand side, then I can equate entity-wise for me to get the value of M that we are looking for. So, if I call my matrix M, let me say, let M, let it be A, B, C, D. Because for the operation of matrices, all of them must be the same set of defined matrix. Like here, we're having 2x2 two two matrix for P, 2x2 two two for Q, 2x2 two two for the identity matrix M will also have to be a 2x2 two two matrix, okay? So, I'm having it with entities A, B, C, and D. So, if I want to multiply M and Q, then in that case, I'm going to have something like this. I'm having A, B, C, and D, okay? Multiplying the matrix Q. And what is Q? We got Q to be 1, 1, minus 1, and 2, okay? So, that's going to be 2P. 2P will mean that 2 is multiplying all of the entities in P. So, I will just write that as, okay, let me just say, that will be 2 multiplied by 1, 2, 1, 0, okay? Plus, 3Q will be 3, which is a scalar quantity, multiplying the whole of Q. 1, 1, minus 1, 2, okay? Students, I hope you are getting this. Then, minus 5I, and I, we have already defined as 1, 0, 0, 1, Okay, so this is the expression that we are going to have for this particular algebra that we are trying to carry out. So, if you are to solve it, I told us already, when we are multiplying matrices, we multiply the row with the column, okay? And then, if you want to do that here, we are going to have A multiplied by 1 is A, okay? B multiplied by minus 1 will be minus B, okay? Then that is for the first set. 
In the second case, we have this first row multiplying this second column. Okay, so that will be a times one. That is still a. Then plus b times two. That will be plus two b. All right. Then in the next case, we have this row multiplying by this column. Okay, so we have c times one. That is c. Then d times minus one. That is minus d. And then finally, we still have this row multiplying this second column. So we are going to have c times 1 that is c then d times 2 that is plus 2d all right so this is the expression for the left hand side and here if you want to open it up we can say this will be 2 times 1 is 2 2 times 2 is 4 2 times 1 again is 2 2 times 0 is 0 we are using the scalar quantity to multiply each of the entities in this bracket okay and in the second case three times each of these entity, we have 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 1 again is 3, 3 times minus 1 is minus 3. Don't forget your sign, you will make mistake if you forget that. 3 times 2 is 6, then minus 5 times this identity matrix will be 5, 0, 0, 5. So, this is what we really need to understand, student, for us to just solve it well. So, let me just extend this so that I can solve out this right hand side. 2 plus 3 minus 5 2 plus 3 is 5 minus 5 that will be 0 so this is 0 okay 4 plus 3 is 7 7 minus 0 is 7 what am i doing here i am adding the entities with respect to their position so the first entity in the first row and the first column i'm adding them together the second entity in the first row second column i'm also adding them together here the second row and first column is 2 plus minus 3 that is minus 1 then minus 0 that is still minus 1 then 0 plus 6 that is 6 6 minus 5 that is 1 okay so good and wonderful we've been able to now see that this particular expression is equal to this particular expression and what is that meaning that means a minus b is equal to 0 okay and a plus 2b is equal to 7 okay and then c minus d is equal to minus 1. And then c plus 2d is equal to 1. So, man, that's going to land us with 4 equations with 4 unknowns. And of course, that is quite good for us. We can go ahead to solve that. So, that's what we are going to proceed to next. So, here is the expression that we just got. We cannot say that we can equate it entity-wise. Because if this matrix on the left-hand side is equal to this matrix on the right-hand side, that means that each entity is actually going to be equal to the other so we can say in the first case we can say what we have is a minus b is equal to zero okay then in the second case a plus 2b is equal to seven okay in the third case we have c minus d is equal to minus one okay i explained all this initially then c plus 2d is equal to one we have these four equations, equation 1, equation 2, 3, and here equation 4. Now, if we look at this, they, they look symmetrical. Um, if we take them two by two, like in this first two equations, we have A and B as the unknowns. In this third and fourth, we have C and D and the, as the unknowns. So, we can actually go ahead to try and solve that because, now, look at this, look at this. From equation 1, from 1, we can see that if we take b to the other side, that means that a is equal to b. Alright, so if we want to use a is equal to b in 2, in this equation 2, therefore we can say that a plus 2a is equal to 7, meaning that 3a is equal to 7, and then a will be 7 over 3. But we have said a is also equal to b. So a is 7 over 3, then B is also equal to what? 7 over 3. Wow, interesting. Our work is being done. Then in the second case, we will look at equation 3 and 4. And we can say that, let's, let's just add the two of them. Or better still, let's subtract. Let's say equation 4 minus equation 3. What am I doing that? I'm seeing that I have C and C here. So, C minus C is going to give me 0. Okay, so... If I just want to do that, on the left-hand side, I will have C plus 2D, that's equation 4, minus C minus D, that's equation 3, 
is equal to 1 from equation 4 minus minus 1 from equation 3. Don't forget this negative sign. If you do, then you get the wrong answer. Here, we just want to open this up. and say this is C plus 2D, then minus C. But this negative sign and this negative sign will multiply each other to become plus D is equal to 1 minus minus 1. The two negative signs will multiply to become plus. So it will be 1 plus 1. And that's going to give me 2. Okay, so I'm having C and minus C. Those will cut out. And I will have 2D plus D. That is 3D is equal to 2. Therefore, D will be 2 over 3. And then from 3, from 3, I can just say from here, I can say that C is equal to minus 1 plus D. So, if I'm to use that here, I can say that C is equal to minus 1 plus 2 over 3. Minus 1 is the same as minus 3 over 3, okay, plus 2 over 3. And that will just give me minus 1 over 3. So, the matrix M. So, matrix M that, if you recall, I define as A, B, C, D. Is now going to give me what is the value for a that is 7 over 3 what's the value for b that is also 7 over 3 what's the value for c minus 1 over 3 and what's the value for d 2 over 3 okay if you want to just do some extra work you can factor out 1 over 3 out so you have 1 over 3 into bracket 7 7 minus 1 2 but it's still the same answer so understanding the linear transformation and how we can obtain the matrix of operation on it and the algebra of matrices had helped us to solve this question both for the question A and question B.